I was home uh, recently visiting my family and in the top of one of the closets in their office, I found boxes and boxes of old slides from the 1960s all the way up through the mid 1970s. And today, I'm going to digitize them. For a long time, B&H and I have been trying to find something fun to do uh, with the ES2 film digitizing adapter. We're gonna do that today with an Nikon D850 and the new 60 millimeter micro lens. Okay, why the D850? 35 millimeter sensor, tons and tons of resolution, so I know I'm getting some great stuff there. Like 35 millimeter slide and 35 millimeter negative film, it's the same size, just about the same size as the imaging sensor on full frame DSLR. D850 is Nikon's latest and greatest, tons of resolution here, so I think uh, our, our copy work is going to look awesome. If you're shooting slide film, no problem. I'm just gonna shoot this like I would any other photograph. I'll usually shoot RAW plus JPEG. The RAW file gives me a lot of control in post-production, so I have more headroom if I need to shift the exposure around. You know, some of these uh, photos with the slides and the negatives, the exposure might be off a little bit. So the RAW file, having the headroom to make some correction, that's a nice thing. Now one awesome, awesome feature of the D850 is there's actually a negative conversion mode built into the camera. So if you're photographing a negative, it'll flip it for you automatically and turn it into a positive. You do that through the camera menu system. This is awesome for speed, amazing for speed. So if you need to bang through a bunch of stuff really fast, terrific. The downside is it's JPEG only, which means you don't have the benefit of raw latitude. Now, if you want the advantages of raw for negative without using the in-camera feature, no problem. Just shoot the images in raw when you import them into your photo editor, flip them. I'm choosing the 60 millimeter micro lens because it's very compact. It's a shorter focal range, so it's easier to get a flat field of view. Um, also don't have to worry about as much distance between the negative or the slide and the imaging sensor. It can focus down uh, very, very close and give us a reproduction of one to one, a reproduction ratio of one to one. That's gonna be very important for, uh, for capturing the slides and negatives accurately. So the setup's pretty easy. So you can use the ES2 with any Nikon micro lens. Uh, today we're using the AFS 60 millimeter micro, so I'm gonna use this adapter. And then you have two film carriages. One for negative film, but you can put a, a 35 millimeter strip of six images in here. And then it has the slide holder. My approach is to attach the adapter first. That just screws right in. If you use UV filters or clear protective filters, take them off. You don't want to shoot through any glass that you don't need. This will screw right into the front threads. Let's figure that matched up. Looking good. Again, I'm not over tightening anything. All right, that looks good. Let's get this on a tripod. The tripod's just great because it's, it's going to give you consistency every time. I'm going to bring in my light. Now you can use any kind of light source, tungsten, halogen, you could even use a flash, but I'm using an LED, mostly because it's a lot cooler to work with. And if you work with a super hot light like a halogen, you can actually damage, or if you get it too close, melt your negatives or your slides. So I would stay away from that stuff. Okay, so the slide carriage, it holds two slides. And if you have these thin cardboard ones, they drop in perfectly. Let me get another one in here. I've got those loaded into the carriage, and now I'm just gonna slide them into the ES2 adapter. So the slide holder holds two frames. Any kind of uh, thin drop-in slides, no problem. Uh, if you have slides that were mounted in cardboard, like a lot of the photo mats were doing in the 60s and 70s, they'll slip right in, no problem. If you're using thinner plastic mounts, also no problem, but if you're into the, the heavy duty archival slides that, uh, slide holders that you'd find like in a university archive or a professional application, they're a little too thick to fit in here. They won't fit, so there's fair warning. Oh, one other thing that you will need, yes, you don't need this, but yes, you do need this, a cable release. When you plug this into the camera, that's gonna keep you from introducing any bounce or shake into your copy work. It's very, very important if you want the sharpest picture possible. You can check this out. So what I'm doing is I'm figuring out the distance. You can notice this slide's 
back and forth. And the reason why the ES2 has this design is if you use it with a different micro lens, you want to be able to get that maximum one-to-one -one, uh, reproduction ratio. So I'm going to move this super close. It also allows me to level out the image. Again, autofocus is fully supported, so I'm going to see if I can get focus on my subjects here. Yes. And essentially, I'm filling the frame. So there's the question, should I flatbed scan my film or use a DSLR? Now flatbed scanners have an advantage of light consistency, but I vote DSLR here. I vote D850. It's a much, much faster workflow. You have all the flexibility you need when you shoot raw, and the speed is so, so fast. Just drop the film in, shoot in raw, do your corrections in post, and you've completed your back catalog of photography, chromes, and negative film. Well, I had a great time using the ES2 film digitizing adapter with the D850 today. For more on film digitization, photography, and all things imaging, visit b &H. I'm photographer David Flores. See you next time.